So how do you make a transistor? Let's begin with a bold claim. Transistors are made using light, acid, and the kind of precision that would make a Swiss watchmaker weep. First, we take a thin disc of silicon, a glorified bit of sand, and clean it so thoroughly it's purer than a monk on a sugar-free diet. This disc is our wafer, and we're about to tattoo billions of tiny switches onto it. Next, photolithography. This is a posh way of saying we shine a light through a mask onto a photosensitive chemical like developing film, but instead of birthday photos, we're making logic gates. The light hardens the exposed bits, and then we etch away the rest using acid. Yes, acid, like a goth chemist's dream. What's left is a stencil which we use to dope the silicon. That just means we add tiny impurities like boron or phosphorus, which sound like Harry Potter potions, but actually turn normal silicon into a semiconductor, able to switch electricity on and off like a light switch. Just, you know, really fast and really tiny. Then we repeat, layer upon layer, wire it up with microscopic metal paths, rinse and repeat. Eventually, you've got a fully functional integrated circuit, packed with billions of transistors that are smaller than a single virus particle and more socially productive. Now here's the fun part. These things are so small, we genuinely need computers to make them. In fact, we literally need transistors to make transistors. It's gone full circle. The machines have unionized. So next time your laptop's fan whines at you, just remember, inside it are billions of tiny doped up switches made with lasers, masks, and acid, like a rave, but for electrons. More of this from the nerdiest people you know at craigandave.org.